Hello Twitch and YouTube, what's up, it's me Demi, we're gonna do a development manifesto review because they just posted it like 20 minutes ago and I've been avoiding looking at it until we hit 100 viewers on stream, so we're here now. Let's talk about it. These are the major changes for the, uh, for Delve League, so not everything, the full patch notes will be tomorrow, um, but this is just big stuff, okay? So. Balance changes. Trap throw time, multi-trap, cluster trap, minefield. Traps into a lesser extent mines on certain skills were more powerful than we were comfortable with in validating other ways of using many skills. We've increased the throw time on traps and the damage penalty on multi-trap and minefield while lowering the number of traps thrown by cluster trap by one. We increase in the damage of trap skills and mine skills like lightning trap and fire nova mine to compensate for this. Okay, so they're buffing actual trap and mine skills, but they're going to nerf everything else. Which I'm actually perfectly okay with. That, that means that my Lightning Trap Saboteur is even better. <laughs> That's fine by me. Uh, it means that builds like Arc Mines and Reign of Arrows Traps and Arc Traps, all that stuff's gonna get nerfed. Ellie Hit Mines, which is probably a thing, I'm sure. Um, that's all gonna get nerfed, but it means that the actual Trap and Mine skills are going to be better. So that's fine by me, I'm okay with that. We've changed what it means to be instant to mean the skill can be used while performing other actions. They can't be used while you're unable to take any action, like when you're stunned or frozen. Okay. We made a large number of effects instant, mostly buff effects. Most of these are reservation effects to make applying your auras and heralds faster. But we've also applied this to Molten Shell, Phase Run, Blood Rage, Convocation, and Righteous Fire. Convocation and Phase Run being instant. Phase Run for uh, lab running, pretty good. Um, Convocation for minion builds, it's a pretty huge quality of life. Blood Rage, I mean, everybody just uses it once at the beginning of the map, basically. And RF, same thing. It's just small quality of life changes. Instant casting Molten Shell, though. You might be able to make a, like a Scold's Bridal Molten Shell meme by like self-casting and hitting yourself and exploding each time if it doesn't have a cast time but like some sort of internal cooldown. Yeah. Many of these have been most otherwise untouched other than adding a short cooldown. Damn. Only Molten Shell was increased in mana cost at lower levels. We'll be monitoring the skills and being mindful of adding future instant skills so that they need to be timed well rather than using them every time they're off cooldown. Okay. They still haven't mentioned Immortal Call so I'm not sure if that was changed or not. We'll see. Spellblock. This is this could be a huge nerf to Spider Queen. We'll see. We've changed how Spellblock is gained, so it's only available from flat sources of Spellblock. All existing sources of Attack Block to Spellblock conversion have been changed to a flat source of Spellblock. We've added Spellblock to more places on the passive skill tree with higher values than were previously available. The Gladiator passive skill now uses your Attack Block as your Spellblock. Okay, so Gladiator, I believe, is the same then, but it means it's harder to get full Spellblock like it used to be. This change was made partially to remove some restrictions that impacted design, but also to let Spellblock be something all characters can have access to rather than being very powerful for very high block characters <laughs> spider, and weaker for characters that weren't and haven't heavily invested in this. Okay, that sounds good to me actually. Because currently it's like, if you want to get full Spellblock, you're forced to use Gladiator Ascendancy, Reckless Defense Unique Jewels, or Son of Lazvar Rainbow Strides. There's a couple other minor things for Spellblock conversion, but that's mostly it, right? Now it looks like on the skill tree, the shield block nodes will probably have uh, additional spell block on them every once in a while, which will be good. Like these nodes might get some spell block. Um, these nodes might get some spell block. These nodes might get some spell block. Like, I think that's fine. These nodes as well. Like I don't see anything wrong with that. They might be able to give um, some spell block across the tree. Maybe a keystone if we're lucky. I doubt it, but you never know. That's fine. Spider might not be spell block cap though now. Unless she is still snapshotted and doesn't get changed with the patch. I'm not 100% sure how that works. Saffles on Gladiator might be really good now. That would be terrible. Because Saffles is you only have spell block. So you lose all of your attack block and have shitty spell block. That sounds like a bad idea. Alright, movement skills. Movement skills are a core part of gameplay in Path of Exile, both for survival and efficiency. We've tried to reduce some of the disparity between different movement skills, so builds have different choices on how to approach their mobility. This is just a first step. We intend to make further changes incrementally over time without destroying the feeling of mastery that their speed grants. Okay, shield charge. The movement portion of shield charge is no longer affected by local weapon speed modifiers. <laughs> Okay, this line right here means they just fucking gutted Bright Beak Shield Charge builds. This is just dead. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, fuck. For those of you that don't know, the uh, the actual attack speed roll, like the increased attack speed roll, is what determines how much it's affected. It affects your Shield Charge. So Bright Beak has a 50% increased attack speed modifier. Attack speed modifier. Um, so it has the fastest Shield Charge attack speed in the game. There's no competition. Nothing even close to that, right? The highest after that's like 30. Uh, so that's gutted. Gone. 
That means the total weapon attack time will still affect the buildup and end animations of the skill, but your travel time will be only impacted by movement speed and global attack speed. So that means they've kind of like flattened it out. This makes using certain weapons called Bright Beak far less powerful with the skill, flattening the playing field when it comes to what weapons to use. I like that. That's actually what I just said in different words, so that's cool. We'll be further reviewing the effective attack speed on the skill in the future, but for now we're just adjusting this one aspect. Okay, so they're trying to make it so you can use any weapon and shield charge instead of everybody just fucking equipping Bright Beak to um, get that movement speed, right? So now you can actually get a good damage weapon for a spellcaster and like actually use it instead of just equipping a fucking Bright Beak from whatever level you can equip it and using that to level 100 because it's better clear speed. Which kind of makes me sad because I actually invested in one of these. Where is it? This one. Attack speed, onslaught on kill, bright beak. Totally fucking useless now. So I ha that's a thing that I have. Thanks. Alright. Flame Dash and Lightning Warp. Flame Dash and Lightning Warp are the two primary caster based travel skills, and they have fallen behind the effectiveness of Leap Slam, Shield Charge, and Whirling Blades. We're shortening the cooldown on Flame Dash, lowering its cast time slightly, and increasing the range it can travel to be consistent with other skills. It also gains cooldown recovery rate as the gem levels. I like that. Okay, okay. Flame Dash might be somewhat more viable now besides just the occasional get up a ledge thing. Lightning Warp now has a shorter cast time and starts with 20% reduced duration at level 1 of the gem, scaling slower as it levels. This is so the scale doesn't feel as bad when used at lower levels. Okay. Um, I have a feeling they're probably still not going to be nearly as good as Shield Charge Rolling Blades or Leap Slam, but it's nice to see some alternatives for casters like... I like using Flame Dash, but it's not very good, so I rarely ever get to use it, actually. The fact that it still has charges is kind of annoying. Alright, Sunder. Sunder is a very powerful leveling tool that provides strong damage and great cloud clear from a safe distance. We've left the damage intact, but we lowered the length of the rectangular damage area by 20%. Sorry, Sunder boy. So they just lowered the range. That's fine. It doesn't affect your single target damage. It doesn't affect anything else. It just affects your, like, long range. I think that's fine. Alright, Kinetic Blast nerfs, hopefully. Kinetic Blast has some mechanical quirks that made it a very powerful area clearing and situationally powerful in some boss encounters when they're against a wall, basically. The skill now deals 30% less area damage from what was previously 10% less. Or, sorry, wow, what am I trying to say? 35% less from what was previously 25%, so they nerfed it by 10%. That's pretty huge. We've also changed how the areas are placed. They can now be placed in slices around the central impact so they can't overlap. Against walls, they won't be able to spawn at all. Okay. Um, you guys want to do a paint demonstration of what that actually means? <laughs> a bit confusing, but I'll try to draw it. So currently, the way it works is you fire your kinetic blast, you hit a wall. If there's a target here, you have like four explosions, right? So those explosions, the, your projectile will hit the wall and then it'll just spawn the four explosions like right here. And you'll all shotgun the boss. I'm assuming now you're gonna like, you're gonna fire at the wall and it's gonna try to spawn explosions here, probably. So you're only gonna get half of them, most likely, instead of all of them. Which is probably, uh, it's a pretty big nerf to single target against walls. It's still going to be pretty good, I mean, you're still going to get some of the explosions, but you're not going to get all of them like you currently do. Which I think I'm okay with, I mean, Kinetic Blast isn't supposed to be a single target skill. You're supposed to have an alternative setup to kill bosses. But it's been so strong for so long that they've always like hesitated to nerf it because there's nothing to replace it, but we have skills like in the Ellie hit now, which hasn't actually been seen on this yet, so I don't know if it's getting nerfed. I don't see Arc either. So I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Alright, Vol Soul Gain Protect Prevention Time. We've changed all Vol skills that are affected by duration modifiers to have their soul prevention time also affected by the duration modifier. <laughs> Alright, rip the permanent Vol skills builds again. They really don't want Vol skills to exist as like a main clear skill. I don't like that. I like the fact that you can build into enough duration to make it viable to last. Like, you can make your Vol skill last longer than the duration penalty so you can still recharge. But that, they just keep killing it every time. This means that when increasing the duration of Vol skill effects, Vol haste, sorry, you're also increasing the soul prevention time. This keeps certain skills that could get very long durations from being recharged during prevention time. It is beneficial for effects like Vol Stormcall and Vol Earthquake that would likely already have duration reductions. Oh, actually, yeah, for Vol Earthquake, that's a buff. Because you scale less duration for Vol or for Earthquake, which means that it also reduces the uh, cooldown before you can gain souls again. Okay. So, so some of them it's good, some of them it's not. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. We'll see. Alright, Vol Righteous Fire. Vol Righteous Fire now takes the combined life and energy shield sacrificed from ES before life to better support low life characters using Vol Righteous Fire. That's a buff. This is a huge buff, actually. I've been having this problem with my, uh, my Guardian, because when you turn on Vol Righteous Fire on a low life build, it puts you at one life, and then your RF turns off, and most life, or most low life RF builds don't have a way to leech life or gain life back, so they just sit at one life. They can't turn their RF back on, it's just fucking useless, right? I've been using Doriani's Catalyst, which has 0.2% elemental leech on it, which gives me enough leech while I hit, when I hit with uh, Orbo Storms to gain like one or two life back so I can turn my RF back on. It's incredibly stupid, very gimmicky. They fixed it. You can now use Vol RF on low life without it turning off your regular RF. Good. Fine by me. Alright, Earthquake and Vol Earthquake. The Aftershock damage multiplier is now consistent at all levels, the same value it was at gem level 20. This is make the skill better to use while leveling before you have opportunities to invest in it. I like that. I like that. That's actually a pretty big buff. So you get a level 1, you get a level 20 Aftershock at level 1 now. Which, I don't know offhand what that actually is. Let me look. Earthquake. What the heck? Where's my Earthquake gem? Okay, well, I don't have one, apparently, so I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's like 70% more damage, probably 69% at 20. You get that at level 1. So that, that might be the new leveling skill, actually, maybe. We'll see. Alright, physical projectile attack damage. We saw this rework yesterday in a Ziggy D video, which I haven't actually reviewed yet, so we'll just explain about it here. PPAD has been renamed Vicious Projectiles because PPAD is stupid. Increasing its readability by 70%. Yep. It now grants more chaos and more physical damage to supported attacks instead of poison and bleed damage, letting it apply its damage over time to Caustic Arrow and Toxic Rain. Okay, so um, the way it currently is, is this just a more damage multiplier? Let me see if I can find one to demonstrate. I don't have one offhand. Alright, to the wiki we go. Sorry. Okay, so it currently gives you more damage, less attack speed, and it gives you more damage with bleed and poison caused by hits, right? So the new version, it still gives you the damage and the less attack speed modifier, but it now grants more chaos and more physical damage over time to support it attacks. So that allows you to scale, yeah, the degens of chaos skills. It still scales bleed, still scales, scales poison, but it also will scale the dots from skills, which is nice. And it, it gives the same bonus that currently does, so it's just like an overall buff for bleed poison type builds. Okay, passives tree changes. We've adjusted a large number of minion passives, adding new minion starting passives for the Rich and Templar. Okay, I like that. Adding a new large minion wheel above the Templar's elemental wheel, as well as reworking the minion clusters near the Templar starting area. These include effects that let increases in reductions to minion damage also apply to you. That's what the Scourge has on it, that's really good. And the same for minion attack speed. Okay, okay. I see you. We've also included a number of minion accuracy increases. This might be like the best minion changes we've had in a long ass time. That's a huge buff for minions. So they're talking... Fuck, like... Probably right here, maybe, there's gonna be a minion wheel. They're probably just gonna scoop this up and put that here. I believe this is the Templar elemental wheel. Then they're gonna put some minion damage nodes, like in the starter nodes. That's, that's fine. I like that. Okay. Uh, Templar starting area has been reworked, improving bonuses as well as pathing and better enabling attack minion hybrid. Sure, this is all for the Guardian rework. Which starting area now has a minion path replacing the existing mana and mana regen path? The mana skills have been removed to a path alongside the energy shield path with a new mana notable that grants increased mana, flat mana regen, and flash mana recovery. Okay. So that would be this side of this. This is getting moved out of the way. This is going to be minion damage instead, and then they'll probably just put that minion, or that mana nodes like right here. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Guardian is no longer, oh, sorry, the Guardian no longer has a notable that affects Warcrys. We've taken these bonuses and placed them on the passive tree. I said this in a previous video, and all the YouTube commenters were like, no, that's wrong. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a Guardian Ascendancy only effect. And I'm like, no, I think they're just going to move it to the passive tree. So one cluster between the Templar and Marauder grants you and allies attack, cast, and move speed if you used a Warcry recently. I like that. It removes the Warcry mana cost, as well as some other smaller bonuses. The other cluster between the Marauder and Duelist makes Warcry's instant, lowers the cooldowns, and as well as other minor bonuses. Okay. That's cool. We might get some Warcry focus builds for the, uh... 
for Aurobot style and minion support style characters, that's actually a pretty huge buff. And to slightly encourage party play, your Aurobot might do more than just run around and pick up loot. They might actually have to use a, a, a work card every once in a while. I like it. So those will probably be like, I don't know, maybe here and here. We got some empty slots. Or maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe they're going to rework some of these nodes. We got a lot of space for like extra wheels down here and here, so I don't know. We'll see. Alright, what do we got next? Pathfinder, or sorry, no. Guardian Ascendancy. Guardian now has two new notable skills that reward having minions while being directly involved in combat as well as empowering Herald of Purity. We already knew that, sort of. They showed Herald of Purity, which is linked to Guardian Ascendancy, but they didn't give us the Guardian Ascendancy nodes yet. So that's fine. Uh, Pathfinder Ascendancy. It now has four skill paths, replacing its previous two. This path, I went over this in yesterday's video as well, which I'll try to link in the description of this video if you haven't seen it yet. For those of you in the stream, just type x point 3.3.4. The Pathfinder now is a, I already said that, the path includes more potent poison bonuses, chaos attack damage bonuses, general chaos skill effects, and a bonus for the new Herald of Angity. It's intended to work well alongside the new chaos bow skills as well as any poison attack character. So they gave it more poison damage, chance for your poison to deal double damage, uh, increased, what was it, like, physical converted to chaos, and then like, physical as chaos bonuses, which is nice. Alongside some uh, reduced virulence decay rate and increased effect of Herald of Agony whatnots, so it's just it's just nice. It's like the same as Guardian. It's linked to the Herald, just like uh, Elementalist is linked to Ellie Heralds, and this is linked to Agony Herald. I like it. Uh, bow passives. Bow passives now affect skill damage over time. Previously, almost all weapon passives gave damage from ailments with attack skills while wielding a weapon of their type. They now grant a bonus of damage over time instead, letting them boost the damage of Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, and Decay. That's actually massive. Um, currently, the only way to scale builds like Caustic Arrow is why can't I move? It's just to take uh, generic chaos damage stuff and damage over time nodes. You can't really take the bow wheels because it doesn't do anything for you unless you're poisoning. Now it'll also apply to damage over time, which is pretty huge actually. I like that. I like that a lot. These are good quality of life changes for bow characters. Okay. Secondary damage. Sources of secondary damage, like Corpse Explosions, Dene Dead, or the Blast from Explosive Arrow, can now be blocked or dodged. This is massive for PvP and PvE. The block and dodge type required is based on the source of secondary damage. This is to make Explosive Arrow easier to mitigate in PvP, but also prevent certain monster abilities like Corpse Destruction bypassing defenses of block or dodge based characters. Okay, so overall, pretty huge defensive buff for everybody. Yes, I'm recording. Uh, pretty huge defensive buff and PvP balance, which we've been waiting for. I've been like dealing with explosive arrow builds for years now, because they shotgun and their secondary damage, you can't, you couldn't block or dodge them, which was just bullshit. Um, but yeah, they fixed that. So that's cool. <laughs> this is a direct nerf for Spider Queen. <laughs> you fuckers, I'm being targeted. It's all my fault. Alright, Frost Bomb, in addition to reducing life regeneration rate, also reduces energy shield regen and recovery rate. This is to let players have ways to mitigate very defensive energy shield characters, which may come in handy against certain grandmasters. Bex, you, you, you targeting me? I feel singled out right now. <laughs> I wonder who they're talking about. Oh, man. Targeted spider nerf Bex, what the hell? I trusted you and this is how you repay me. Oh, oh man God. Eggs everywhere Me today. Wow. I really wish I had an amazing <laughs> steamer to make me smile. That's today. actually so funny Sucks to suck here's to me <laughs> JK Lee less than three Fucking Bex. Alright, anyways. I think that overall this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with all these changes, except for, you know, the ones that directly nerf Spider Queen, like this and the block changes. But overall it looks like more damage for the for everybody. They didn't nerf Arc, they didn't nerf Ellie Hit. At least not the actual like attack and cast versions, they nerfed trap versions of them, but they buffed other traps in mind, so I don't know, I think this is fine. I like this. I think overall everything here seems to be pretty good. If you can block secondary damage now, can't you take a Scolds or Gluttony Belt with Gladiator and get huge violent retaliation stacks? That's not secondary damage. Hitting yourself is not. It's a different type of damage. 
Rip Sunder Gladiator. Um, I don't know how much spell block you're going to be able to get, but it looks like Gladiator is unchanged when it comes to block. Because they're just giving you your attack block as spell block, it's the same as before. You just cap your attack block and your spell block cap just like you currently are. Yeah, you should be able to block volatiles. Although, it's, it doesn't say volatiles are secondary damage here, it says corpse explosions and explosive error specifically. But if, if volatiles are secondary, which somebody told me yesterday they're not, I think you can currently block them, so... Yeah, there's nothing mentioning staves, there's nothing mentioning dual wielding, there's nothing mentioning two-handed buffs, stat sticks, none of that stuff's getting changed, it looks like. Was Arc Trap still okay? It's It'll be playable still, but if they like increase the damage penalty so it won't be as broken, and they lowered the throwing speed of it. Poison build, endgame build, now viable? It's already viable. You can already kill everything in the game with poison, it's just better now, and there's some new skills and new synergies. Ellie hit didn't get nerfed, no, surprisingly. They buffed other things. They buffed poison and they buffed like chaos damage in Caustic Arrow. So we might see a different meta, but I'm pretty sure Ellie hit's gonna be still up there on the brokenness mechanic. Traps dead mechanic, no. They nerfed like linking a skill to trap basically. They left it alone when it comes to lightning trap and other ones. Black Gla dude, Gladiator is the same. I'm gonna keep repeating this until you get it. They are not changing Gladiator to be worse. It's the exact same, if not better. Yeah, I think if they if they give Ellie hit more than a league to be good, that's fine by me. Yeah, nothing about statistics. I think that's all the stuff though. If you guys have any last minute questions, we'll talk about it in the stream, but I'm gonna end this recording here. So uh, yeah, normal shout out stuff. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching. Bye.